the Ten Commandments are things that any society would more or less agree with. Thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt honor thy mother and father. Yet, in the world of Shadowverse, there exists the Ten Omens, half of whom take the commandment to an extreme, and half of those who violate the commandment entirely. Thou must not speak blasphemy. The omen of silence ruling I believe that we should all simply remain silent so as never to utter blasphemy. Thou shalt not worship any idols. We shall not believe that she is the one and only idol that all shall worship. And with that we will take a journey into Omen's Eternal. <laughs> What's up everybody, Twinkel back here from the Twinkel Clan with another Shadowverse Evolve video. This time we are going to be doing a box opening of none other than VPO5 Omens Eternal. So we're going to go ahead and get right into it. We're going to set that here, we're going to grab our tools, we should also prepare something to dispose trash and these sure are things I do not apparently prepare properly. We are also back on a slightly different setup so things look a little awry. My bag. Cut the plastic off. So we see uh, we have the ten omens. They are either extremes of the ten commandments of the holy bible or they are complete violations of them entirely. We will not delve into too much detail on that. Uh, it's already kind of in the opening part of this video. So, this is also, at least today when I'm recording, this is June 23, so we're a week away from the one year anniversary of the release of Shadowverse Evolve in English. So, this is, is indeed a first anniversary set so there's a lot of special things to be had here the box topper as you're going to see it's going to be a foil token so we have a foil fairy got his little first anniversary emblem right over there also we got to prepare some sleeves to store our foils in so with that out of the way we can go ahead and get right into the opening we're going to start over on the left side first with these eight packs, so we're going to find that Kawaii Uma Musume. We have five different designs on the front here. That's very nice. We have Gao Mu, Omen of Disdain for Dragon Craft. Let's see what this first pack has. So, you know, we already went over all these cards before. So, we have a Mystic Artifact, one of the new tokens that the Haven Craft card Ancient Amplifier is going to make for us. We're going to stick it on right next to the Fairy Girl, I suppose. And we already have our first legendary, we have Ryo Omen of Truth. And we also have a uh, Galmu Evolved on top of that. Very nice, very nice. Again, Sephira as a gold, we'll set those over here like so. Next pack, we have another Galmu. Token on the back is Destruction and White. This is for the Destruction Omen Archetype or what they call Idolatry. And you know, it's for the Shanga Omen of Destruction. We may or may not see her. Well, I mean, we see her on the box right there. She is the second Omen because she corresponds to the second commandment for violating the whole Do Not Worship Idols thing. Let's stick that over there. And we end up with a Hakrabi, pretty neat card for the Haven Craft class to tutor for specific one cost amulets. We got with Shenga, here she is on a pack herself. Omen of Destruction. Right, we have a reprint knight token. Let's see what we get here. We have an Apostle of Unkilling. I forgot, I should actually separate the, I don't know, we only separate the evolves, I'll, I'll figure out how to actually separate the thing. So we're kind of like over like one of the same uses for this set. I forgot to get a token. A uh, puppet, there's going to be a new puppet archetype for both forest craft and abyss craft. We're going to find that, spoiler alert, it'll be the forest craft class that will benefit the most from this archetype. 
and see another legendary here is going to be Deuce Ex Machina, who is also featured in the Open 8 Winger play map. So you're going to go get that. Good luck on you. Alright, so what's that? Four packs in. Three legendaries, not a bad count. Token, Shield Guardian. Oh, looks like we have a Gilnelly's Omen of Craving for Neutral there. And Apostle Usurpation for our guaranteed gold. Alright, alright. And that was a Miura Bane. Kalmu in a Miura Bane pack. That's a little ironic. <laughs> Omen of One, Omen of Craving. <laughs> alright. A token first, more puppets. There's the Ancient Amplifier. We have a Foil, Serving of Destruction, and Disdainful Rendering. Overall, a lot of neat cards in this particular set with all of the architecture actions going on across the omens. The main should be combined with different or existing cards to make for a complete deck. I right, got our shield, guardian there. Thundering roar, another disdainful rendering, and an imperial swordsman as our second gold there. Neat, neat. Oh, I guess Dragoncraft also has minimal puppet interaction. So this should be our eighth pack. We are halfway there. Another Miura Bang pack. Back here is the construction in white for the Shanga. Ancient Protector, Apostle of Silence Evolved. Alright, we're halfway there. Let's go ahead and get rid of these eight packs. Pick them out of the way there. Okay, then we move on to the second half. So, you know, so far not too shabby or seeing. Four of our legendaries there, maybe SLs, maybe the first anniversary serialist, who knows? Mystic Artifact for Token. And we have a Destructive Refrain. The Destruction deck, I know, I already played against it a couple times because two people in my locals already decided to mess around with it. Speaking of, that thing just it is the deck that is kind of get your sidekick app rolling a ton because there's all of these plus ones, plus twos, all this burning heal interaction. Oh, here we go. Very, very neat for neutral. Very good anti burn shenanigans. You know, you really dislike the. Uh, you really dislike stuff like Fable Haven. Very always indeed your girl. Okay, we have another reprint ignite. Here we have a more tank of manipulator. It's a very very funny forest craft card, I'll say that much. Pretty much force your opponent to make one of several bad choices, more reprinting knights. Saviors, we have a Izugia, Omen of Unkilling, and a Fairy Torrent, and the Izugia of Walk on top of that. That's most likely all of our legendaries. Izugia is a funny card. Ancient Artifact, Portal Craft Never. We have an Apostle of Lust for our foil there. And then we got three more packs. Let's see if we get anything, any big surprises towards the end. Got a Mystic Artifact. Got an Apostle of Truth for, and an Apostle of Unkilling for our goats. Two more left, they're both Miura Bane packs. I'm just kind of uh, get this out of the way now. Ooh, trash. More, more artifacts. 
And we see a Disciple Rush, very, very powerful aggro card, Galus. Archetype really brings a lot to the table for aggro Abyss. I, I love it. Destruction and Black, so no leaguers uh, as per usual. And we end off with Athena, Dynamite Daredevil will take it. Not too shabby, honestly. We, we pulled, we pulled all right. You know, again, it's just kind of one of those, you either go big or go home sort of sets where you're gonna pull, you know, maybe some SLs, some one of the better looking girls, like definitely Galmu is one of the better ones because that, that easy face damage is beautiful. You know, it's not, it's not much better. I, I just like calling her build your own king soldier. <laughs> That's the fact it she reminds me of. If you do it right, Omen, Ryo Omega Truth could be a pretty neat card. And you just kind of auto win if you get to that point in Runecraft, depending on how you build it. And guess a lot of legacy makes the force real Luga 2 in our Winners and Losers video for BPO5 Omens Eternal. Your sex mocking uh, is, a, is very good for control. Haven Dex. Some people have considered her in Fable. I don't think I'm really feeling it. Gilna Lee's again very good for the star strategies. Uh, pretty much anytime I've seen. I've seen the query Archer be splashing the all sorts of things at my locals. We, we've had destruction craving. We've had disdain craving. The card goes places. I haven't seen people really talk much about Izulia or the unkilling archetype answer right now because. Hunters don't really get their good stuff until later sex, as Rika pointed out, but it is a nice longer term investment for what it's worth. Unkilling definitely can do some nasty gets you know the whole convert and opponents forward into a token could just be very powerful. So yeah, these are you know the sister here is you know as as I said, they're not the worst things for us to pull. Some of the ghosts are pretty nifty. Just kind of set them aside for y'all first before we go into them. I, I definitely like these in particular. Yeah, I think. Def definitely has some nice goals. You know, one of our earlier goals, Hakrabi being that easy. Amulet Cougar we have. Apostle Gustain, easy Storm, easy, you know, we, have, we don't have her Evolve right here, but her Evolve goes a long way by helping us get more value. The Gustain, Disdainful Rendering, very staple card in the Gustain archetype. Apostle of Silence is how you end games as Silence. Or, you know, again, if you're me, you're going to try something a little crazy, we'll talk more about that another time, perhaps. Again, anti Burnario shenanigans. Lust does some crazy things. Bring back your Valneric that we haven't seen, but Valneric's a good card. Easy face damage of your life, easy sanguine of your life. And Fina Diamond Daredevil, very good for aggro decks. You have a lot of nice cost one followers you want to see more often, or very, very cool. And otherwise, you just have her ability to snipe out an opposing cost one because your opponent is being too overwhelming. So honestly, that has been a very successful box opening, so Thank you all for watching, continue to embrace the darkness, and I'll catch you all over in the next video. Bye bye.